Hello, hello, hello everyone. My name is I'm Unique and I'm here to share some words of wisdom with you all. Some words of encouragement that the Lord has shared with me. God bless you. I hope that you're doing great and that you know that Jesus loves you very much. Um, I'm in the car on my lunch and I'm thinking about uh, inner healing. I know that there's so many different like conversations being healed around the idea of healing and inner healing and it can be so much stuff that people think is actually healing them or you know I'm growing or cutting off everything that's not helping me grow it's so it's just all kind of stuff that culture has out here about healing and everything but firstly I want to say that healing is a good thing to do um and it, it, yeah, we all, every single one of us need healing. The word of God says that we were born in sin and shaping in iniquity, born in sin, born apart from God, born apart from our identity in Christ and shaped in iniquity, shaped um, our lives, our mindsets, our ideology, our emotional and mental patterns have been shaped by brokenness, shaped by things that aren't what God originally intended for them to be be or for us to be um and so i want to talk about healing from a more biblical perspective as i said there's so much stuff out here about energy healing and um just i it's i'm not gonna get into all of what's not right i'm gonna focus on what is right and that is god that is god's word that is the holy spirit that is holiness that is god's standard god's glory god's plan for humanity um, there's a scripture in third John It's close to the back of the Bible. Um, and it says third John, I believe chapter one, and it says, beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Right. Um, and so God wants us to prosper. God wants us to be in good health. He says, even as your soul prospers. So that that gives an indication that in order for us to be healthy or be well in our lives physically, in order for us to be well in any capacity, financially, mentally, whatever it has to start within our souls our soul is our mind will and emotions now once again i'm talking about healing i'm talking about healing in a holistic perspective yes um you know healing can be physical healing can be mental healing can be emotional healing can be spiritual but the root the core of our healing must begin at our spirit our identity the place within us that doesn't change that isn't unsettled that isn't wavering right um, so laying, having that spiritual foundation is the most important thing that we can have on our process and on our journey to healing. Um, there's a scripture, um, I can't think of which gospel it's in, but Jesus is, Jesus gives a metaphor of us building our house. There's another proverb. <laughs> I love the word of God. It always comes back to me. I thank you, Holy Ghost. But there's a proverb that says a wise woman builds her house, but a foolish woman tears it down. Um, and as I was saying that Jesus gives a parable in one of the gospels and he talks about how, uh, talks about building a house and how a wise person, a, a smart person, a person with good sense is going to build their house, uh, on, excuse me, a firm foundation. They're going to dig up, um, dig up all of the, the root and crud and, dig up like good you know when you're building a house I've never actually built a house but I, I'm just imagining the process of building a house you don't just find a piece of land and just start laying stuff on top of it you don't just start putting um, you know cutting wood up and laying it on the ground and building on top of it um, or you don't it, it the bible actually says you know a, a person who isn't wise excuse me I have company nearby <laughs> but he says it's like a person you have a person who build their house on sand they start putting building material on a foundation that wasn't very stable and then you have another person who built their house on bedrock on something that was firm that was that was leveled that was concrete that was not literally concrete but something that wasn't going to move and so that can be a metaphor to how we can begin our healing journey because we don't want to begin our healing journey with just 
starting to do all these things externally that, that we think are going to bring us healing, try to change. I mean, it's good to try to change your diet and try to do things physically to improve your well-being. Hallelujah. Um, but that's not where true healing, true lasting healing uh, comes from. True, lasting, everlasting <laughs> healing can only come from God, the word of God. Um, and so if we want, like I was saying, once we start our healing process and we try to start with these external things, you know, this external, this worldly cultural concept of self-care and um, is the healing and everything. I have to have my hair on point. I have to make sure my hair is done every week. I have now it's nothing wrong with looking fabulous. I'm just giving the framework for what true lasting healing is from a biblical and spiritual perspective. I'm not, I'm not knocking anybody for looking cute. Look, I like to look cute. I like to try to look my best. Um, but looking our best should not be our priority, especially when it comes to healing. Um, so as I was saying, when you, as the metaphor Jesus was giving about the sand, um, the sand not being something stable. I, I went to the beach um, actually not too long ago, and it was so beautiful, so wonderful, and hallelujah. It was just, oh, so glorious. It's just, oh, Lord, I want to go back. <laughs> so I had a flashback. But um, I went to the beach, and I actually was going to, I was like, I'm going to exercise, you know, the people I was with, the family I was with, and I was, I was like, I'm going to get up in the morning go run on the beach you know and so I tried to go for I, I ran for maybe I ran for I tried to get I think I did like a mile on the beach but it was so challenging I mean my calves were on fire my body was just working like two times as hard trying to run excuse me trying to run on the beach um because the 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 is so unstable it's so uns it's unsettled it's like so grainy and it's like all wavy you never know you have to watch it for no excuse me, the grain is so sand the sand is so grainy like you never know if you're going to step on a level part or it's just it's it's not it's not stable and so to try to run and and be active on that sand was just it was actually harder on me than it would be to run on a flat surface now granted it, it the challenge it helped me physically to to develop some mus some muscles and get some uh, muscular reactions that I wouldn't get on a regular surface but I'm speaking to healing I'm still speaking to healing right so as we um, look at the sand versus the stable foundation, as I said, this uh, building your your healing journey, building building your uh, inner healing, any type of healing on something superficial, on something that is unstable, our flesh. You know, like I said, getting your hair and nails done um, every every week or ever often, going to the gym all the time, trying to eat all the right things. Those things are good, um, and they do impact our health. They do can they can in some instances improve our sense of self esteem, but it's only temporary because food is food burns off, hair gets old, nails get old. You know, if these are these are only fleeting things. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 31 that um beauty is fleeting or its charm is fleeting, beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised, you know. So all these things, these superficial things, they 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 don't last. They're only temporary. Nothing wrong with them, but they don't bring us true healing, the true healing that we need. And and that God has for us. Now, on the contrary, <clears throat> excuse me, looking to when we build our lives on the Holy Spirit, when we when we say my healing begins with God, the Bible says that in the beginning uh, was God and the word was the word and the word was God and the word was with God and the word became flesh. And so in the beginning, before we existed as humans, before we had any clothes, hair, nails, skin, whatever, uh, God was there. God's word was there. And so that's that tells us that um, in excuse me, anything else apart from God, apart from God's word was created by God, by God's word. And therefore the same applies to our healing, our healing. <laughs> we, our healing, the healing that we need, the healing that we desire as people, whether you are male or female. Now I may be able to give way more insight to my, the journey of a, a female healing because I'm a female. So I, I don't know, necessarily know about, you know, males and everything, the anatomy and mindset and all of that. I know a little bit, not from experience. So anywho, 
the beginning in the beginning was the word in the beginning was the word it, it's, it's gonna make sense to you i promise and so building that house that we talked about that jesus gave the parable about building a house on sand versus bedrock versus something solid something firm something that's not going to move something that you don't have to worry about your house falling apart and then you got to start over build over again like if you build, just imagine just picture it in your imagination you build a house you got all your it looks i mean it looks it looks fabulous you got the prettiest paint you got hard with floors you got granite countertops you know whatever you like your house to look like this is what your house look like but you built it on some sand so anytime a storm comes by anytime life happens then that house is gonna fall to the ground you to put all that money energy and effort into building this house come on holy spirit you to put all this these resources and time into building this house and now every time something anything happens in life anything happens in the natural or whatever your house falls apart and you have to start over just like with us you we can build we can do all these external things we can get all these degrees we can get all these um the makeup and and all the you know just external things external success but when life happens if we're not truly if we if we haven't built our lives on bedrock if we haven't made decisions if we haven't navigated in such a way that god is a foundation for our life then all this stuff is going to fade away yeah i mean you can't lose a degree technically you, you know you can't this is you know but you as a person won't be stable won't be settled a degree and money and all those things they don't ground us they give us a false sense of security that can make us feel like we're successful to a certain degree but even with that you have to maintain that you have to keep on making more money keep on rising excuse me rising up in your profession you have to keep leveling up and keep doing you have it's like a a, a never-ending cycle that you have to maintain on your own and we were never meant to live on our own. That is apart from God. And so back to the other house built on bedrock. In the beginning was the word of God. Our healing has to begin with God, with the word of God. Hallelujah. Any thought process that we have, any any feelings, any anything that we have going on within ourselves, our thoughts, our emotions, anything that didn't originate f with from the word of God is not from God. Anything that's happened in life, abuse, neglect, um, you know, all sorts of abuse, excuse me, all sorts of, 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 of bad things that can happen to us in life. Um, those were, that's not a part of God's original plan for us. Hallelujah. Because God is a healer. God is whole. God is holy. There is no lack in God. You know, there is no hurt in God. God is love. This is this is the word of God. God is love. And so throughout life, when we become born in sin and shaping in iniquity, we, we get separated from or separated from the consciousness, if you will, of God's love. So our first tip, any person's first step toward true lasting healing hallelujah growth be has to begin with the word of god and when you build your healing off of those principles you can then and, and you begin to build your house off of those types of things when you say this is hallelujah you say okay if god says this about money then i'm going to act on this principle about how god says i need to manage my money if, if this is what god says about my thoughts if my thoughts are not grounded and rooted and settled in what god says my mindset needs to be then i know this is not from god i know this is not healing me i know this is not healthy right and this is God's, how God says I need to treat my neighbor or treat myself, love my neighbor as myself. If I'm not treating myself well, if I'm not getting enough rest, God says that, <laughs> you know, we should have a day of rest, work six days and, and rest the seventh day. That is rest from all of our labor, right? If I'm not doing, if I'm not putting all these things into practice, if I'm not building my life off of these principles, if I'm not making decisions off of these godly principles, then then my healing is is never going to come my healing is only going all of that only going to be temporary hallelujah so um 
I really want to dig deep into this, but I have to get back to work uh, here shortly. But I wanted to share these thoughts that the Lord has shared with me. Um, lastly, I will say that um, it's a <laughs> it's, it's it's a journey. It's not when you're healing because we're born in sin and shaping in iniquity because we're here on earth for years and years. There is no there is no point that you get to to where you say I'm done healing. I'm done um, getting better. I'm done improving. There get there, there it comes a point where you get a lot more stable mentally, emotionally, physically. You know your health gets better. They get there there are points where you improve and then you you go from maybe brokenness to healing you, you when you heal from brokenness you get to be to be stable to be in homeostasis if you I studied uh like health sciences so homeostasis is a, is a place within your body your physical body when all of your organs are functioning the way that they're supposed to be functioning when everything is flowing everything is in harmony nothing is straining nothing is is off balance nothing is off center and when you get from when you go from brokenness heal brokenness healing the healing of god the holy spirit you can go to stability or homeostasis when your mind is able to function from a place of stability when you're able to see things clearly when you're able to to be not all just caught up in the wind and, and emotionally thrown off and just mentally depressed and when you go from brokenness, you you go up, and I'm not saying that, that that brokenness just disappears. Sometimes there are different pieces and parts of brokenness that we have to break down and continue to dissect throughout the course of our life. But there comes a point when you when you when you get less broken enough to be stable, and after you get stable, then it is emotionally, spiritually first. Hallelujah! It must begin with the Word of God. It must begin with God spiritually. Um, mentally, emotionally, financially, when you get stable to a point to where you're able to to function at your normal capacity, then you can go to having success. You can go from just, you know, living, going by living life, just getting by to actually having success, setting goals, reaching goals, having goals for your mental health, having goals for your emotional health, having goals for your financial um, financial well-being hallelujah having goals for your physical health going beyond just a flat line going beyond just a plateau you know it's good to have stability but once you get to that level once you get to a, a point of stability uh, i'm not saying everything is all perfect but you can actually function without going crazy you know you're not pan having panic attacks and anxiety attacks you're not depressed once you go from there to stability you can go to having success, setting goals for yourself, actually seeing and 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 developing a plan and strategy, asking God or God giving you a, a plan and strategy for success. Hallelujah! And once you go from there, this is where I think we all should desire to be as humans, as women, as men, as children of God. We go from success to thriving in our success. Hallelujah! And success must also start with God. Success is not something that starts externally. Success is not something that we should look outside of ourselves to see. We all have different callings. We all have different um, assignments. We all have different gifts and talents and abilities. But it's not up to us to manage our lives based off of someone else's assignment, someone else's calling, someone else's identity in Christ. It is our assignment. It is our duty. It is our uh, position as children of God to do what he created us to do. And that can be challenging. And, and figuring that out can happen more so in the stability phase when you're discovering, your, you know, life is, you, you're always probably going to be discovering yourself until the day you pass, go, go to be with Jesus Christ. But, um, you know, discovery, when you start to discover yourself, you start to, you know, God start to reveal your gifts and talents to you, what he's blessed you to be able to do and what he expects you to do with what he's blessed you with. Hallelujah. And so that kind of happens in the stability slash success phase, if you will. Um, hallelujah. And so um, I'm going to share my testimony a little bit and then I'm going to go back to, to, to work um, or finish lunch. Um, in the beginning of my journey of healing, 
hallelujah i was very broken i didn't know who i was i didn't have a clue of who i was i didn't know who god was i knew religion i grew up in church family very religious i knew how to sing clap i seen shouting and dancing and i saw the holy spirit move in church a lot but i didn't have the holy spirit i just saw and i thought maybe it was something that only the select few people got to do i actually asked my grandmother one day after church like what the holy spirit was and can i get it and she was like yeah all you have to do is open your heart to receive them and so i was like cool but that I was probably like seven, maybe six, seven years old. You know, I'm not really thinking. I'm just, I'm just, God was thinking, you know, it's crazy how God works. God already be known. Jesus be known. But, um, so after that, I went on to live life. You know, I, I went through a spell of worldliness and just living wildly after I went to college and, uh, some through high school, I just kind of got off the chain. If you <laughs> got off the chain, um, but even I got to a point to where I, I got so broken, so shattered, so um, just dysfunctional within myself. Just it was a mess. I was a mess. But I cried out to God, and I and I I um, I had a relative give me a Bible for like one of my graduations. And I, you know, when you get all your gifts, you getting all the money. You like money, money, money. You put all your money. You think you ain't think about the Bible. You like, oh, thank you, a Bible throws it in the closet or something but I went and I found that bible excuse me it was actually sitting out excuse me it was actually sitting out in my room at um in my room and I went and picked it up and I just began to talk to God I said God I don't know where I am I don't know who I am it was very ugly it was an ugly cry it wasn't cute at all it wasn't calm because I was in such a panic and I was just like searching I kept searching and trying and trying all these different things trying all these different you know ways to try to find myself to find satisfaction to find peace to find like to feel this feel like I'm loved you know I had to I had I was pretty popular I had you know party like I did all this stuff but I was still so empty and it's like the more I did it the emptier and emptier I felt and so anywho I cried out to God and and I said I was just like God if you're real look I don't know what I'm doing please just show me the way and from there that's when my healing began my healing did not begin when I started um when I started I don't know that's where my healing began I'll say so it began with God after that each day I began to read the word of God consume the word of God consume teachings about God consume teachings about you know sermons and different things <clears throat> I began to go to church and not just out of religion, but out of a necessity. Like I need this. I need God. I need to learn more. I need to get filled with, you know, and so it was a day by day process. And I began and I actually went to counseling. I saw a Christian counselor. She was licensed in both. Um, she was an LPC a licensed practical counselor and a Christian counselor. And so I got the Bible and I got the practical side. She she began to give me tips on how to manage my care, how to manage my mind, how to manage mental disorders and dysfunction that I was having within myself. And then so God just began to take me through all these different valleys and all these different thoughts. And it was just like off limits. I, my relationship with God was just so candid and open. And I shared every and anything with him. I wrote everything. I poured out my heart before him continually. It was some nights where I cried, 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 couldn't. It was it was rough. It was ugly. But God began to piece me together. And before I knew it, I began to stand. I'm seeing myself like a baby. You know, I was born again. I was born all over again. Again. You know, and when you're a baby, <clears throat> you know, you come out the womb, you're very dependent, you're very fragile. You know, when you're a baby, you got to hold them up. They neck be wobbling down. They, they just, it's just, you know, they're very, very vulnerable. And so the beginning of healing, you'll feel very fragile and vulnerable, you know, because you are being born again. You're no longer the person you used to be. Everything that made you strong, everything that made you powerful and popular and beautiful and everything else before you met God, that's all gone. And now you have a new life. You have a new identity. And so as a baby grows, you know, God was nourished me. God even would send people along my path as I was going through it, sending people along the way to minister to me, sending friends, you know, people at church or just 
random people when I was out and about, when I was at work, some people would just hand me scripture. Like it was just a beautiful thing and God was just taking care of me and begin. And eventually I became a toddler, you know, and I began to walk. I began to see myself like actually take steps of faith in the spirit, like actually like, oh my God, it was so beautiful. I began to share like um, the poetry that God had put inside of me. I began to want to share the gospel with other people. I began to actually walk by faith. And then it's like, I just kept on growing and growing in the spirit of God. The spirit of God kept growing inside of me. And so you know, it's I'm just I'm still on this journey. I'm not saying that I've gotten to a place as 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 one of the writers Paul of the Bible says. He's just like I don't count myself to. I'm not already there. I'm not already where God is taking me. I know I'm just this is just the beginning, but um, I'm still gonna press toward the mark. You know, I'm forgetting the past that's behind me. I have to deal with it. I have to make peace with my past. I'm not ignoring the realities of of my past, but. Um, Hallelujah. I am a new creature. I'm a new creation. That's not who I am anymore. And so um, God is good. And so that's that's kind of just to share with you how I know and how I understand what healing can be like. As I said, it's not pretty. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't look good. And it's not for everybody to know about. You don't have to go and broadcast to everybody that you're going through healing. This is my healing season and I'm growing. If you're truly serious about your healing, if you're truly getting breakthrough, if you're truly, you know, beginning in your relationship with God, right? Or just building that connection with God again, building that bridge to him again, with him again. If you're truly in that place, then it's, it's not, it's not meant for every and anybody to be in. It's not meant for you to be posting, you know, on social media all the time, you know, because it's not pretty. Giving birth is not pretty. Hallelujah. I don't know if you've ever seen like actual birth video, but I have, and it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's painful. It's, it's, it's not pretty, it, but when the baby comes out, you know, it's all nice and cuddly, put the clothes and stuff on it, but on the baby, <laughs> but, um, healing, healing and being born again is, is not, it's not something that is not something that everybody's meant to be a part of. And I'm not saying just hide yourself and be secluded from the whole world. You still have to function. You still have to do things in life. You can't just put life on hold. You have to participate in life and, and participate in society. But, um, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you that I'm able to do that, you know. But, um, yeah, you know, be vulnerable before God. You don't have to be vulnerable with everyone. You know, if God sends you a friend or if you already have a friend who's who's spiritual. Who Now, when I say spiritual, I mean in the things of God, I mean, who knows the Lord Jesus Christ, who has the Holy Ghost. I'm not talking about somebody who just, everybody want to be spiritual, you know what I'm saying? But don't nobody want to go to the Bible. That's a different story for a different day. Um, you know, but everything spiritual begins with the word of God. Nothing, everything outside of that is just something that people want to make up to sound deep, to sound cool. Horoscopes and crystals and um, what else? Um, sage and, and all these different, these different things. And look, I've been there. I know what it's like to be seeking an actual spiritual experience or to be, want to be spiritual, want to appear spiritual. I know what that's like, but none of it brought me what I was seeking. None of it actually fueled me. You know, none of it actually uh, drew me any closer to God. Jesus Christ says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. Hallelujah. Except through me. Except through me. Hallelujah. Not me, but Jesus Christ. This is Jesus' words, you know. We can't get to God anyway except through Jesus Christ because he is the one who sacrificed his life so that we can be near the Father because we are so broken and, and a hot mess and sinful and just were enemies of God, hated God, didn't care about God at all. Because that's how we were, you know, there's a penalty for sin. When we do wrong, there is a consequence. Um, hallelujah. But thank God for Jesus Christ because he died. He took our place instead of us having to take on the consequence for our sin. I ain't saying you get to get away with everything just because of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? There's certain stuff you end up suffering the consequences for. But the sin issue, being separate from God, whatever separates us from God, Jesus Christ fulfills that space. So now instead of us going to God all apprehensive,
apprehensive and like, dang, I know I did all this wrong. Like, God probably just upset with me. God is like, no, I sent Jesus Christ and I took all my anger, all my whatever out on Jesus. And now so that you can come to me, hallelujah, the gospel, that's the good news, y'all. You know, wherever you are on your journey, whatever you have dabbled in, whatever you may have sought to fill a void or to make yourself seem closer to God or more spiritual or whatever, God still loves you. Jesus Christ still died for you. And God wants nothing more than to be close and intimate intimate with you. You know, he knows everything. He knows about your past. He knows about the things you've done, every, the, the hidden things, the things that other people have no clue about, or the things that everybody knows about you. He, he still loves you. He still desires to be with you, to be close with you, like close, close with you because he created you. That's your daddy. Like, that is your creator like <laughs> he knows you through and through he knows your purpose he knows the plans that he has for you hallelujah he he has good things planned for you you're not supposed to be out here sad and broken and without an identity looking to this and that person for love and affirmation looking to this and that place this and that substance to feel peace or to feel happy or whatever that's not how we were meant to be. We weren't meant to depend on anyone or anything outside of God. God is sufficient. Why would he create us and put us here if he couldn't sustain us? If he didn't have what it took to for us to live and to live well? He says, I've come that, that they may have a life and have it more abundantly. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all don't hear me up in here. Hallelujah that we might have a life and have it more abundantly. And so even if you already have a good life, you're like, I'm chilling, I got my money, my business doing good, I got my boo, I got my girl, my my man, whatever. Even with that, whatever you think um, is good right now, if you don't have Jesus Christ, you know, I've been there too. I've had the good, I've had a job where I made good money, a fine boyfriend, you know what I'm saying? I could do apartment. I didn't, I, like, I could do whatever I want to do. <laughs> I could be whoever, you know, I had that lifestyle and it was just like, um, it felt good in the moment, but it's like, I always knew that it would end at some point. And it'd be eventually after maybe a year or two passed, I was just like, this is not it. Like, this is not fulfilling me. I had to keep on going through the same, keep spending money, keep spending my time, keep, you know, giving myself to these things and these people that weren't really filling me up, you know, just, I had all these friends who it was just like there, you know, it was very superficial, very superficial life. So even if you have that lifestyle where you're like, I'm straight, I don't need nothing. Like what else more could there be to life? Trust me, there is more for you. God has more for you. God has a wonderful life for you. Hallelujah. And it's available to you today. Whenever you get ready, God is always there waiting on you. He's not like off handling business with other people and not concerned about you. He says, he, he says I'll leave the people, the church people, everybody who got their life together, everybody who, who've who already given their life to me. He said, I'll leave them to go and get, I'll leave the 99 sheep to go get the one that's lost, to go get the one who is, who has gone astray, who doesn't know me, who, you know, who is separated from their God, their provider, their father, their creator. So don't think that God don't care about you. Don't think that the religious people or people who know God, who have known God for longer, don't think that they're further ahead or that they got more favor than you. Like that same favor, that same joy, that same love, that same peace that God's children have is available to you. He wants you to be a part of the family too. Like, so anyway, wherever you are on your journey, whatever you have or may not have, whatever you know or don't know about God, just start fresh with him. If your relationship with God starts with a question or starts with, anger or starts with whatever or tears however your relationship begins it's okay excuse me and that may not begin at church and that's okay too eventually you know it's good to be a part of a of a church a bible believing church a bible based church with other like-minded believers you know but god don't worry about all the details just present yourself to God right where you are 
If you got questions, ask him. If you mad to confess it, tell him. You know, like he not tripping. He good. He solid. Anywho, I just, I felt led to share that. I really pray and believe that this helps someone. Um, and that, hallelujah, my God, that God does a work in you that will blow your mind. God will do things. God is going to do things in your life. If you're watching this video, if you've made it to this point, God is going to do things in your life that are going to blow your mind, that are going to surprise you, that are going to throw you off, that are going to make your plans for your life look like cockroaches. <laughs> I don't know. Cockroaches. Nobody likes cockroaches. I mean, some people do. Some people like research insects. Anyway, I don't like cockroaches. It's not like I'm scared of them. I just, if I see one, I'm just like, you know, I'm not just excited. Like if I saw a bird, but anyway, um, so, um, Hey baby. Hey, I know you saw. Him. Okay. Um, so yeah, God is going to blow your mind. Hallelujah. Stay encouraged. Start where you are. If it starts with a gospel song, if it, you know, you may not just be a person who just want to dive into the Bible right now, or it, the Bible may be overwhelming. Start with one scripture a day. Start with the Bible app. It gives you a scripture each day. You know, just get into the word. Let it be organic. Don't force it. Don't try to fit into no religious box either. Don't feel like you got to come with a three, four piece suit and, um, you know what I'm saying? With the church head and heels and putting a sheet over you and long skirts. And, you know, that's let if that's what you do, let it be something that God has led you to do. Nothing wrong with that either. But let it be real. Let it be genuine. Let it be something that's on your heart to do. Hallelujah. God will make you. God wants to. God, you're God's creation. You're not religion's creation. You're not the church's creation. Hallelujah. We are the church. Hallelujah. God's people. But um, we're his creation. We're God's workmanship, according to the Bible. So let him work in you. And as he begins to work in you, he will reveal everything you need to know. He will teach you everything you need to learn. He will heal the broken parts, the broken pieces of you that you have left off on the back burner somewhere because you just was like didn't want to deal with it. I'm telling you, you can only suppress and hide stuff so long, but eventually you're going to have to... <sighs> deal with stuff and it's not it's not easy but it's so worth it guys and i'm telling you from my experience god is so good y'all hallelujah thank you jesus uh be blessed you guys until next time once again my name is i'm unique um if this blessed you or in any way like whatever um I also have a song out. It's called Live and Not Die. It's on YouTube and all other streaming streaming platforms. Apple Music, um, Spotify, um, Tidal, Amazon Music. Anywhere you can find music is there. Um, I also have a podcast called Keeping It G where I have these types of conversations about different topics. Um, so stay stay tuned for more once again i pray that this blessed you until next time goodbye